Your selling job is only half over when the client asks for a contract. Planning with the sponsor is your key to making him happy, and the details of your plan should be reflected in the contract you send. You'll need to make sure that your real performance needs are met. List exactly what you're being paid to provide on the contract. My recommendation is that you arrange to stay in one place. The walk-around performer is a joy to some. Others meet the walk-around performer with about the same eager anticipation as they greet the mariachis at a Mexican restaurant. They might just pay you to go away. So, try to establish a space of your own, a children's area, so to speak, or attach yourself to the existing children's area, meaning over on the margin where the moon bounce and the pony rides already are. Then, the children will learn where you are and they will come to you. That way you can stay with your equipment and not leave it vulnerable to little hands. You have a place where you can be heard over the DJ and you won't have to move away from the three o'clock softball game. My favorite way to order my duties at a full featured performance is to start with faces and balloons. If it's a long day, I can start the balloons and faces and do the magic show with its accompanying games and prizes and then go back to faces and balloons for the remaining time. My favorite choice is to put the magic show at the end, back timing the show and games to finish just about at my ending time. That way, if anybody comes up after the show and asks for a balloon or a face, I can tell them the supplies are all packed up and my time is over, and that helps make it stick. It avoids, oh please, just one more, my, my kid didn't get one. Of course, then I can say, well, I, I'm sorry, but the supplies are all put away. If you're doing more elaborate games, see if you can establish a schedule of when you'll do what. That keeps you from colliding with the boss's big speech or the door prize drawing, or all the kids getting called away because the meal is ready, or whatever else they may have planned. I do try not to duplicate the services of any other performers at the same event, even ones I've brought along. If a client needs someone extra to cover face painting or balloon twisting, I like to stick to the other entertainment skills and let them be the only face painter or twister. I tell you what, if anybody wants a face, why don't you see my man Ian right over here? Can you step around there? That keeps down the comparisons. He did a five balloon hat for that kid. Why won't he do one for me? She painted a pretty unicorn on my sister. Why is yours ugly? By the way, you really want to make sure that independent entertainers are welcome at the location. You won't have any problem with public parks or restaurants, but theme parks and commercial picnic grounds often insist on their own people. Check with the site and do it yourself. Don't rely on I guess so or sure from the sponsor. And if the sponsor has uh, arranged for uh, a, a site that has admission or paid parking, add the fee to uh, your bill. There are a couple of other points I like to emphasize with the sponsor. First, never overpromise. You'll get more respect by showing that you're aware of the limits of what any artist can do in a crowded picnic than you will by promising the sun and the moon and then delivering only what the circumstances allow. For instance, if they've hired you for just an hour, you're not going to be able to serve every one of 100 children, and you're not gonna try. You're an entertainer, not a balloon factory. But some clients assume that you'll be exactly that unless you point out that there are limits and when it's time to stop, you'll have to stop. Second, you're not a babysitter. I can't promise to occupy the full attention of every child all the time. They'll be coming and going. Moreover, the parents retain all responsibility for supervision. And I can assume that if a child asks to have his face painted, he has his parents' permission. Third, I need the name of one person. Usually it's the sponsor's contact who's on the phone to be the boss during my stay. A single individual I can take orders from and get the check from. Otherwise, it's possible that I'll have to field 
conflicting instructions from any number of people who think they're the authority. It's amazing how many people will try to tell you what to do and when and to move over there and to start the magic now and can't you walk around and can't you stop walking around and can't you stay for another hour. We'll pay you. We'll send a check in the mail. Sure. It goes on and on. Fourth, I need good, solid shade, both for me and the children, for the duration of my stay. I need a reserved parking space, close, as close to my area as possible. I need a check before I begin working, and I'll be taking the occasional bathroom break and resupply break, and that should be expected.